We're in a bit of trouble here. The um, the engine is carked it on me. So it's starting and then yeah, you give it any juice and off she goes and the engine light's on. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. In this one, we're heading to the southwest. I'm very unfamiliar with the area. This is actually my first camping trip heading south from Perth since I've moved down this way. I want to try and find a spot along the Collie River somewhere. I'm really interested in exploring that area. River camping is not something I've actually ever done before. The weather for this weekend is supposed to be really good. The further I've got south of there's this massive band of cloud that's obviously hanging out over the coast. So I'm hoping that that doesn't turn into any rain. It's not supposed to. So fingers crossed for you know a nice evening where I can stay dry and have that fire going to keep warm because it is supposed to get down towards the zero mark and be quite cold. We've only got a few more Ks along the forest highway to go and then we'll be able to turn off. And I'm hoping once we do that, we start to get into some of that beautiful forest that this area is renowned for. It is green, we've had plenty of rain lately, so it will be interesting to see what any tracks are like that I get on. And also, because of all that rain, hopefully, you know, the forest and everything should be just looking absolutely spectacular. <laughs> They sort of actually overhang the road. It's a beautiful outlook as you drive through. We've just turned onto the road into Wellington Dam. I really want to check out the dam itself and then from there we'll work out what the next steps are. Constructed in 1933 and enlarged in 1956 to cope with demand, the Wellington Dam is the largest dam in the southwest and second largest in Western Australia. Originally having a capacity of 35 gigalitres, it can currently hold 185 gigalitres. This is a huge body of water that pales in comparison to WA's largest dam, Lake Argyle, which has a capacity of over 5,700 gigalitres. I've stopped at the top of Wellington Dam where the kiosk is and there's a bit of a look out there to be able to check the dam wall out, which is really cool, but I'd like to be able to get down the bottom and potentially get the drone up if I'm away for, from some people. Um, I don't want to be impacting their time. So I'm just going to go for a bit of a drive back and hopefully get down to the bottom of the wall. Now talking to the, there was a lovely couple of ladies at the kiosk that were helping me out. In this national park, Wellington National Park, you have to be in designated camp zones if you want to um, have a fire. And it's not really my idea of camping if you're sort of really you know, close to other people. So I was asking about some four-wheel drive tracks in the area and, and there's some of those. If you sort of head out of the National Park a little bit, there's some forestry type area where you can do some four-wheel driving and you can camp in there as well. But again, apparently you can't have fires in there either. So I didn't bring my camp stove, uh, you know, the gas stove. So I need to be able to find a place where I can have a fire so I can actually do some cooking. So I'm gonna go to Honeymoon Pool, which is pretty renowned. I've heard of that before. It's supposed to be really, really nice. And you can camp there and have a fire. I, I don't think, I don't reckon I will stay there because um, I don't want to be on top of other people, but there looks like there's a bit of a walk trail. There's heaps of walk trails that head off from the Wellington Dam, the top there where I was, um, which would be really nice. This one looks really good from Honeymoon Pool. So I'm gonna head there and check that out. And then from there, we might see if we can head back, right back along the Collie River somewhere to an area where you can have a fire sort of more on the bank. So it looks like I need to get out of the National Park, basically.
the Stones Brook campground and there was some rapids there as well and it looked like you could actually stay in that area. It is done really nicely for, you know, a national park campground and there's some sections where there's sort of, you know, four or five little campgrounds all in one spot. So if you're coming down with your friends or something like that, you know, it'd be nice. It said everywhere there were no fires um, and really the whole purpose of my trip is that I want a light of fire. So this isn't for me. I'm going to check out Honeymoon Pool as well because I have heard about that. But again, it looks like another one of those places where you know, everyone's on top of each other. Honeymoon Pool is stunning, there's no doubt about that beautiful greenery and you're right amongst all the camp spots that they've made uh, you know right amongst all the trees and the bushes so you know in terms of getting in touch with nature it couldn't be any more than that there's some nice um, you know barbecues and facilities there toilets as well so if you look a little bit maybe um, less efficient it's a, a pretty good place to be able to stay and it is really really nice no doubt about that but um, you know, you're on, on top of other people and I'll keep driving got to the top of the hill unfortunately no big lookout like I was expecting out over the river but there's a nice little bay to pull into here there's jarra everywhere I need a little bit of wood um, to start a fire with, so we'll get some little pieces here. It's pretty wet, this wood. It's been sitting on the ground for a little while. There's been plenty of rain the last few days in this area, but I bought a bag of wood, which I feel pretty dirty doing, because I don't normally do that for camping, to actually buy a bag of wood, but I wasn't sure what you're allowed to do down here, but picking up this sort of stuff is totally fine. We get a few bits to get the fire going, and then we've got the big bag to get us through the night. parked it on me so it's starting and then yeah, you give it any juice and off she goes and the engine lights on uh, no this is a base for powering this is a base that never never does this never has any issues at all I don't know what it's gonna be is majorly concerning. Held it then. Ugh. I'm just right on a bend here as well, just trying to at least get forward, get off the road. There we go. This is not good. I don't want to have to get towed all the way back to Perth. It's going to be a disaster. <sighs> 
feels like I've got absolutely no idea with cars. I've got no idea what I'm talking about, but it just seemed like an alternator. Like it was enough to get moving, and then it would stop and cut out. And now there seems to just be enough power to be juicing itself up. Pulled out my angles plugged in. I just wonder that battery setup that I've got in there, it's completely cooked at the moment, but I still had it plugged into my battery in my back seat. I just wonder whether that was maybe maybe it was still drawing when I was pulled over on the side of the road. Maybe the isolator is not working, the switch that I've got in there. So maybe it was still draining when I'd turn the car off. See if we've got enough. At least get moving and see if that might be able to charge the car up. Let's see what happens. We still get stuck on the road. It's positive, at least. It get home I don't even know where I am so I need to check out a map and see how do you get back to Perth from here my biggest concern is getting back on the freeway the forest highway and it cutting out and someone rear-ending me something like that's not gonna be too good Literally come back through the way I've just been. Might try and try and keep heading. I'm just outside Collie. I think I'll keep heading towards Collie and um, and just see how it's going for the next little bit. See if it can charge back up. Ah, so annoying. This car is a beast. Really sure it's battery. We're, oh, that's a nice big river. It's that spot, that's beautiful. Um, I'm really sure it's battery. So since I've turned that second battery off, uh, things are looking a little bit better. I'm at least able to put the indicator on and um, it hasn't stalled again since. So just heading towards Collie. The worst thing is, as we all know, for a battery issue, the worst thing is stopping, but I'll have to get fuel. So, pull into Collie to service station and get fuel, obviously turn it off. Hopefully it's gonna turn on again and we get moving straight back up to Perth. I think, I'm trying to think, the last time I put a battery in this car as well, I reckon it's sort of three years ago, three and a half years ago, so I think it, it might be time. Just putting a little bit of a premature end, premature stop to the trip. But hopefully, we can get to Collie if we can fill up and get the car started again. That'll be a huge bonus. We've made it to Collie. We'll pull in, pull in somewhere, find a fuel station, and cross the fingers that the beast will start again. All right, cross your fingers. Yes! Oh. 
waiting for pairing. It's stressful. What I'm really most annoyed about is that I feel like the problem's probably solved, but I don't have any confidence that I do go out to the bush and pull up somewhere for the night. That the car's gonna start tomorrow. So it's back on the highway and off to home. We've made it about halfway now. Things seem to be really good. There's no issues at all with the car. I'm starting to regret my decision to head back to the city all the way down that area. And yeah, all I wanted to do was um, light that fire and keep up for the night. But there's just that concern about what happens tomorrow morning if it starts and the issues all around that. But so far, coming back, it has not missed a beat at all. Certainly, if you're getting a new battery tomorrow, I'll put that in. It has been three and a half years, I think, since I put one in, so definitely solve some of the problem, and then we'll just see if there's anything more than that. But so far, so good. Bloody done it. I will make it home from here in a couple of turns from home. It's basically three hours, a bit over three hours since everything went down. So it's been a pretty long day in the car. I'm so disappointed that I'm not out there in the bush somewhere with that fire and uh, enjoying a night out there, but I think the right, the right decision's been made to be able to get back and make sure that I'm not stuck out there tomorrow morning, but certainly made for a really long day in the car and um, yeah, really disappointing um, day really too, because I was looking forward all week to getting out and doing something. So I guess that goes back on the list for a, another time. Thanks very much for watching. It's certainly been a bit of a different one. The last um, few hours has made this episode a little bit different. And hopefully, I'll see you in another episode and hopefully see you back down the southwest very soon. I'm very keen to get down there and check out that Collie area and get, get in around that river. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks very much for watching. Please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. For some camping action, check out this video in Bremer Bay.